What is going on, Pats Nation? It's Patriots Global here, back with another video. And if you're wondering, dude, why do you look like the exact same way you did in your last video? Well, that's because I'm recording it literally right after that last one. And don't worry, if you watched that video, you would have heard Chase in that video all the time. I kicked him out for this one, so we don't hear him playing around in the background again. So don't worry about that, guys. Uh, but in this one, I'm finally giving you guys the highly requested video. My way, way, way too early New England Patriots 2021 season record. Yes, yes, yes. The time has finally come. I would like to say that I actually made this video a year ago from now for 2020. And looking back, like it was, I did a way too early record prediction. And then I did a later record prediction where it's like uh, my more accurate ones that at least I feel more accurate. Um, and for my way too early predictions, I only got like three or four games wrong. So it's not bad. Not bad. Uh, but like always, guys, take this with a little bit of a grain of salt. These are my immediate thoughts right now. I'm going to back them up. But it's important to remember that we're in what? May right now. Training camp hasn't happened. OTAs, mini camp preseason like there's still a lot of things to happen P players are going to get injured players will get released players will get traded players will develop there is so 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 much to happen before week one even occurs that is going to change things up drastically for the nfl so like always i'll be making a part two with my more accurate and final predictions probably post post um hmm. Sometimes I might be post free agency or not free agency post training camp or post preseason. It'll probably be post preseason uh, because we have three preseason games rather than four. So we'll have a week where nothing happens. And that'll probably be the time that I drop my final thoughts without further ado though, friends, let's just hop right into this one. So this is the Patriots schedule as we all know. So shout out to what is that? Boston sports, I believe for the, uh, for the picture here. Um, so week one, it's Miami, right? This is going to be at home. I think the Patriots do come out here with a dub. And now why do I think that? I think the pages are going to come out here with a win in a very important game to start off the season. Like I talked about in my breaking down the schedule, it's not my favorite matchup that could have happened week one, but I understand it. It makes a lot of sense, and it's going to be an important game straight off the bat for both of these teams, an in-division game and a year where the division is, is very much wide open. For years, it was always the Patriots, but it's wide open. The Bills are the favorites to take it but the Patriots can take it. The Dolphins can take it. The Bills can take it. There is no in place number one team that will take it. It literally is a race at this point. So the Patriots need to start this off right and grab that win against Miami. And I think they will. It's at home. It's going to be one of those things where both teams do have advantages because, hey, Brian Flores used to coach for the Patriots. They have Jason McCourty now. They also have... Um, Adam Butler, who they signed in free agency. Like they're, they're just a bunch of former Patriots, but on the other side of that, the Patriots got back Kyle Van Noy. They got Devon Godshaw. If Raekwon McMillan plays, then he's also a former Dolphin. So it, it, it does go both ways. Ultimately though, I, I'm pretty confident that the Patriots come out with a win in this one. I think the Patriots will just be able to throw things at Tua that he hasn't seen before. You know, let's remember that Tua was coming in and out of games last year with Ryan Fitzpatrick because they didn't necessarily like how he was playing. Hey, maybe he has a really great all season. You never know, but I definitely think that there are some current, some concerns right now with how he's going to develop. And I just don't think that week one, he's going to be fully developed in order to take on the Patriots. And this defense is upgraded tremendously, tremendously from what Tua had to go up against in his final game against the Patriots in 2020. Things are going to be different, friends. Things are going to be different this time around, and I'm confident that the Patriots can just come out with this W. Heading on to week two, we're facing the Jets. I don't know how anyone genuinely believes that, you know, the Patriots are going to go have Z's with the Jets and win one and then lose one, and now week two they're going to lose. No. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. Um, 
you know, the, the Jets, I think, are going to be a better team this year overall. But even if they are a better team and they win a few more games, we do have to remember, oh, by the way, win for the uh, for the Jets game, if I didn't put that up. Um, but they have a new head coach coming in. It's a whole new scheme, offensively, defensively. You have a new quarterback coming in. Like, there's, there's just so much changes, and you can't expect to be going guns blazing year one with all of these changes, let alone week two. I'm not worried. It's just, it's a dub for the Patriots. There's just, there's not much thought that even has to go into it. <sighs> Forgive me, y'all. I got to take a drink there. Um, But week three, week three is a good game. Week three is a very, very good game. A game that I personally very, very excited for myself. Is it my most favorite game? No, not my, not my most favorite game. But it's definitely an interesting one because Drew Brees isn't there. If Drew Brees is there, this game probably goes against the Patriots. But if you have Taysom Hill, if you have Jameis Winston starting, I mean, I'm, I'm confident that the Patriots are going to, to come out with a win in that case. Now, look, the... The Saints do have good coaching. Sean Payne is a good coach scheme-wise. He knows how to scheme things up. He's a very good coach. But sometimes teams get in that place where it's like, hey, this is just going to be a down year for us. And I think that could be the situation for the Saints, kind of like it was for the Patriots in 2020. They were hardcore against the cap this offseason. They weren't able to make much moves. They weren't able to really, you know, necessarily sign much players. Now they didn't have a bunch of free agents kind of departuring anyway. I know they had a couple, but nothing really too significant or nothing too really big. Like they didn't have several, several players that were key guys leaving, but they weren't really able to do anything in free agency. Also, when you lost your starting quarterback, like you're not going to have that figured out week three. So I'm pretty confident that uh, the Patriots, again, will come out with that win which uh, that would mean they would be 3-0 and o at this point. I need to actually quickly, uh, quickly, put, this on, quickly put this on paper. <laughs> um, but now we're going to be heading in to the fourth week. And yikes, yikes. This is, uh, this is probably the game that I'm most scared of all season. Now, it's a game that could go both ways, for sure. I think a lot of these games this season could go both ways. But Tom Brady coming back to the Patriots, luckily for them, it is at home. But to go against that, Tom Brady is the quarterback for the opposing team. Now, Belichick knows Brady for sure, 100%. He knows how to, um, you know, his strengths, his weaknesses, how to game plan against him. You know, he coached him for two decades. But on the other spectrum of that, Tom Brady also knows, hey, Belichick likes to do this. The Patriots offense likes to do that. The defense does this. The defense does that, you know? And a lot of people are going to say, well, you know, Tom Brady has never beat Cam Newton. Well, Brady also played for the Patriots at that time, and Brady doesn't play defense. Brady doesn't play special teams. Like, that really doesn't mean anything. It all just depends on how the Tampa Bay defense can go up against Cam Newton. It, it literally has nothing to do with that record. Um but I mean, they just, they have a, a spectacular team from top to bottom. You know, Brady has been every team in the NFL, except the Patriots. I think that that's something he's really going to look forward to. I think Belichick and Brady both very, very much want to win this game. It's going to be at home. Um, and I, I don't get me wrong. I hope that we destroy Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but I think that this is just where I have to give my first loss. And again, I hope, I hope that I am wrong about this. But I just don't know if I'm going to. Brady has a tremendous offense around him. Arguably the best offense that he's ever had. I just don't know if the Patriots have enough defensively to stop Brady. Now, they have an upgraded defensive line. It just all depends on how can that defensive line develop into week four. I think if the Patriots, you know, pass rush and their defensive line alone can do really, really well and really just get up to par by week four, then maybe this is another situation. The best way to beat Brady, get up in his face, make make him, you know, throw fast, get the ball out quick, get up in his face, and that's how you're going to beat him. But if they can't get pressure on him, if they're going to give Brady time, 
even the slightest bit of time to make reads, he's going to destroy the defense. He's going to destroy the defense. And in the end, I'm more confident that Brady can get the job done offensively for the Bucs than Cam Newton would be able to get the job done for our New England Patriots. Honestly, I think that if we give Brady more time, then he'll get things done to go up against the Patriots defense. Because again, he knows how to play up against the Stephon Gilmore, uh, Devin McCourty, and, and, and whatnot, a JC Jackson, a Jonathan Jones. But I think if you look on the other spectrum, like Cam Newton going up against his Tampa Bay defense, like they have a scary, scary defense. And you can't deny that, it's, you know, especially that defensive line. They're linebackers. They brought back every single starter from that Super Bowl team. So I don't know. I think it's going to come down to scheme. Can Belichick throw things at Brady that somehow he hasn't seen? I just, I'm going to have to give this one an L. But again, I just <laughs> really, 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 really hope I'm wrong. So next up here is going to be a uh, what I would expect at least to be a pretty easy game here for the New England Patriots week five. Now, the Patriots haven't exactly fared well, I would say, against the um, the Houston Texans over the last few seasons. It's been, a, it's been a few years since we beat them. I think it's going to be very dependent, too, on like, hey, is Deshaun Watson playing or not? If Deshaun Watson's not playing, I'm not worried at all. If he does play, then there's a little bit of a discussion there. I know they have a new head coach coming in and everything too. So that does play a part, you know, Deshaun Watson, even if he does play the season, maybe he faces a, sp a suspension right now. It's just way too early to know, but I am going to give this one a win for the new England Patriots. All right. I think you look at what they've done over the last couple of seasons. Um, and the Buccaneers are not the Buccaneers. The, the Houston Texans really beat the Patriots because their offense was never able to get going. Deshaun Watson was able to get points up on the Patriots defense. The offense wasn't able to get it going. And the Houston Texans just kind of ended up being winners. I think this time around, it's going to be different. The Patriots have a much, much, much vamped defense compared to 2020. But they also have a better offense than we've seen, I think, in years. It's better than the offense in 2020. It's better than the offense in 2019. Like, this is the best offense we've seen from the Patriots in a few years even despite what some people might think about our quarterback situation. So I do overall think that this is also going to be a win for the New England Patriots, which means I have, what, one, two, three, four wins and one loss. So I think that brings us to, what, four and one. And then week six rolls in, my friends. Week six rolls in here. And it's the Dallas Cowboys, my friends. The Dallas Cowboys, we will be going to Dallas to play them. This is a tough one. This is a tough one to kind of kind of predict because I think it could go in um in a multitude of different ways. I just I think for me this one's going to come down to coaching. I think that the Patriots can match up defensively with their offense and I just don't know if the uh the, the Cowboys have what it takes to go up against the Patriots offense. I just, I, I don't know if they do. I know that they made some strides um, slightly to their secondary, but even that secondary has some question marks. I don't think you're going to be able to cover everybody. And can their defense kind of handle a mobile Cam Newton? Again, with the Patriots upgraded defense, I think that they can contain what the Cowboys have offensively. So, you know, I'm going to give this one a win for the Patriots also. All righty. Now, some people might think that, hey, Patriots Global, you're being way, way, way too optimistic. And guys, I'm being as realistic as I possibly think right now. Like, again, this this could very much change. It all just depends on what we hear. Um, more signings could happen, injuries, trades, like I said, all of that, player development. And we'll just have to hear about how that goes from here on out. But these are just my honest thoughts, you know. And now we're going to head into week seven here where we face the New York Jets yet again. And I'm confident in this game again. You know, it, it's the Jets. It's week seven. It's only a couple weeks later than our previous matchup. I don't think they got it together in what, like four, four weeks, four or five weeks. Yeah, I just, I don't see that happening. I think this is another win for the Patriots. I just don't think the Jets are good enough to, you know, kind of go halvesies with the Patriots. And I think that, you know, the Patriots are still able to blow them out of the park. So I think that brings us to what? One, two, three, four, six. Six and one. Yeah, we're at six and one right now. And then we head into week eight. It's going to be super controversial. Okay. The Los Angeles Chargers 
against the New England Patriots. The Patriots will go to LA again to play the Chargers. A year ago, blew them out of the park. Straight up blew them out of the park. They didn't even put up, what, three points on the board? Like, I don't know. I just, I don't know if the Chargers did enough to be able to go from that like 45 or whatever it was to zero loss to to beat the Patriots. I, I do think that they did help Justin Herbert out by giving him um, some some help on the offensive line. I think that was one of the big reasons that their offense wasn't able to get going is because that offensive line. And I think, hey, give him some time to throw and make reads and he'll be much better. So I think it's going to be a closer game. Um, but I don't know, even defensively, I just don't really think they did much to be able to say, hey, they're going to stop an upgraded New England Patriots defense that was able to put up, what, 45 points? Well, they didn't put up all 45 points, of course, but still put up a decent amount of points on them. And not to mention that defense still tremendously upgraded compared to what the Chargers saw compared to the 2020 season. So, you know, yeah, they're not going to want to be embarrassed like they did the year before. I think they'll have some vengeance out for sure. So I think the game will be closer, but I just, I still think on paper, the Patriots have the better matchup. So that now brings us to seven and one on the season. The New England Patriots then go to Carolina. Oh my God, yo, that's my bad too. I forgot to give give you the little uh, little little showcase here, but <laughs> this next one is also a win. This next one's a win for the Patriots. And I'm going to say that because, look, yeah, Cam Newton's coming home. He's probably still the starter at the time. We'll just have to see. But no one has an advantage. You know what I'm saying? Like, Cam Newton doesn't have an advantage on the Panthers, and the Panthers don't have an advantage on Cam Newton because it is not the same team. It's not the same system. They have a new head coach there in Carolina. They have a new system, new players. And, again, it goes both ways. So it's not like Cam Newton can give insight on what they're doing, and it's not like they have insight on what Cam Newton's going to do. And I just don't think that the Carolina Panthers have done enough to to really be scary they added some nice pieces for sure i think they'll be uh better than last year but still i don't think enough to go up against what the patriots have on paper the patriots also know sam darnold okay the patriots have played sam darnold twice a year for several years they know how to go up against him yeah he has robbie anderson now but okay the patriots also played robbie anderson twice a year for for a few years also so i think the patriots at this point just know how to uh to scheme against these guys so I'm confident in uh in in a win over the Panthers also. So I think they made this to let me see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven and one. No. Be eight and one. So that would bring us to eight and one heading into week 10. Now, the Cleveland Browns. A couple of years ago, I would have said this is an easy one. New England's winning this baby. But wow. Has this team turned things around? And I think it all happened as soon as they got that head coaching situation uh, more more so figured out, um, which is what I've been saying for years they needed to do. So, I mean, I'm glad that they did for, for the sake of their franchise. But excellent team. Excellent team from top to bottom. You know, just the, the key areas, the special areas of, you know, wide receiver, of tight end, of quarterback. I mean, offensive line from top to bottom the team has it the secondary they have it they have a pretty good defensive line like the talent is there the talent is there and i just think obviously the patriots they're gonna lose another game at some point and i just i think that the cleveland browns just match up really really good against the patriots and uh, baker mayfield brings some of that dual threat also i'm gonna give the patriots a loss on this one I think it's pretty realistic that the Patriots, you know, lose this one. And it's not to be upset about. It's not the Cleveland Browns from a few years ago. This is the Cleveland Browns from now who made it to the dang divisional round. So that now brings us to two losses onto the season. So next up is week 11. This is going to be the Atlanta Falcons. We're going to be heading to Atlanta. I talked about this in my last video. Some people think that this is like a revenge game for Atlanta. It's not. It's not at all. Let's be real with ourselves. Like, this, there's no storyline here. There's no storyline on revenge game. The Patriots kind of had that revenge game after Super Bowl 51. The year after Super Bowl 51, so I believe the 2017 season, they already beat them. This is a very different team that the Patriots have, a very different team that Atlanta has, like, 
it's not the same quarterbacks. Well, at least it is for the for the Falcons. It's not for the Patriots. Um, a lot of the players that were on the Super Bowl 51 team on both sides are also gone. This isn't a rematch at all. At this point, it's just a game. And I don't think Atlanta did enough. I think it's going to be a tough matchup for our defense because they have a very, very, very good offense with Ridley, with Julio Jones. Matt Ryan is a good quarterback. Um, they also have Kyle Pitts, who they added through the draft. So they have their dynamic tight end now. But defensively, nothing scares me. Nothing scares me at all about them. I'm confident in the Patriots being able to win this one. Yes, it is in Atlanta, but honestly, like, what's the threat? I just don't see it unless somehow their defense is able to just show up, which it hasn't in years, and they haven't really done anything to address that. Um, then this is this is a, a pretty easy one for me. So put that dub on. So I think that brings us now to let me see one, two, three, four, nine and two, which would be correct. So we're sitting at about nine and two heading into week 12 and off one, two for me, just because the Tennessee Titans are a team that over the last couple of years has capitalized on the New England Patriots. But this Tennessee Titans team also kind of took a hit this offseason right? You lost Corey Davis to the Jets. So it's one of your top receivers gone. Not your best receiver, but one of your top receivers is gone. You lost some pieces within your secondary also and on your linebacker core. I just think they took a lot of hits. So like me personally, I am, I'm more confident that the Patriots can win this game as long, as long as they can stop Derrick Henry. If they can prevent Derrick Henry from running all over them, then the Patriots can win the game. Because I think if Derrick Henry does run all over them, then the you know Titans can contain the clock. They can contain the game, and they can come out with the win. I think that's what happened last time. But an upgraded defense, an upgraded offense, and kind of all of the, um, the, the issues that the Titans have kind of gone through um, this, this offseason, like it's, it's a win for me. So let's put that win down. Whoopsies. Put that win down. Make sure I'm correct. Be 10 and 2. Yes. All right. And then we head into week 13. Week 13 is going to be a very, 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 very tough matchup here for the New England Patriots. And real quick, I'm just trying to... um. Just want to see real quick if this is a home game for the Patriots or an away game, because I believe the Patriots ultimately will uh, win home game, but I, I think that they will lose the game in Buffalo. So I do just want to see real quick where it's at. Um, so this one is actually going to be in Buffalo. All right. So I have the Patriots. Losing. Have the Patriots losing this one. But don't get too mad. I think they'll split with the Buffalo Bills. And the Bills are a great team. The Bills are a really, really great team. Um, I mean, it's it's just kind of one of those situations where yeah, they'll probably win one and they'll probably lose one. Um, I just I, I don't think the Bills will defeat the Patriots fully, and I don't think the Patriots will defeat the the Bills fully. Um you know, the first matchup that the Patriots had against the Bills, they almost won. They should have won. They were a couple of yards away, a Cam Newton fumble away from winning that game. And then the second game they had in the 2020 against the Bills, they they just looked horrendous. I'm going to be honest, they looked horrendous. But again, you know, the defense upgraded, so I think they'll be able to contain their uh, defense, or they'll be able to contain the Bills' offense a little more. And then offensively, I expect the Patriots to be able to get things going a whole lot more than they were able to get things going compared to the 2020 season, especially because we added a lot of guys who were able to kind of, you know, help in that yards after the catch situation. So, you know, not everything is on Cam Newton at this point. And you still, Belichick, I think, will be able to scheme against them. But, you know, I, I do still think that the Buffalo Bills will be riding hot at this point. I have them winning one of the two matchups, and that's just why it's a loss here. So the Patriots are currently sitting at about three losses. Then we have our bye week, week 14. I already talked about my thoughts on that in the last video. Week 15, we head into the Colts. I'm going to give this one a loss to the Patriots. Now, this one is very evident on what version 
of a Carson Wentz are beginning. If we get a good version of Carson Wentz, it's a loss. But if we get one of those versions of Carson Wentz where it's like, dear God, why did we trade for Carson Wentz type of thing? If you're the Colts, then, hey, the Patriots could probably win this game. I just think that their defensive line, they have a very good defensive line. They're good at getting to the quarterback. They're good at getting pressure. I think that that's going to get up in Cam Newton's face. It's going to kind of um, get him off his balance. I think the offense is going to struggle a bit. And because I do, you know, in this situation, I do have Carson Wentz being a better version of himself. I think that uh, the Colts offense will still be able to cook, put up enough points on the board, and they'll be able to essentially just surpass the Patriots. But like I said, it it's just very um, – based off of, hey, what can you know Carson Wentz do? What, what version of Carson Wentz are they going to be getting? So I believe that is now four losses that have the Patriots. One, two, three, four. Yeah, it's about four losses I have right now for New England. So then we're going to head on to week 16 against Buffalo, right back at Buffalo a couple of weeks later. Patriots are going to win, Okay. Like I said, I have them splitting. This one is going to be at home. The Patriots can kind of learn from the last time. And like I said, I think the crowd in Gillette is going to help the Patriots kind of win this game. And they'll go have these kind of enough said there. Then week 17, of course, I have the New England Patriots winning this game. Like, there's not much to say about this. Like Urban Meyer, I think, is going to be a good head coach in the NFL. But there's no way that the Jacksonville Jags have a good season unless urban Meyer becomes some wizard and can just scheme up against all of these teams. Like they just didn't do anything to free agency. I'm excited to go up against Trevor Lawrence. He'll be a good quarterback, but like you didn't do like anything, anything to free agency with so many holes from top to bottom all over the Jacksonville Jags team. Like there's just not really anything scary about the Jags. This is a, a pretty easy one for me. And then lastly here, I have the new England Patriot. Oh, by the way, win. <laughs> win. And then lastly here, week 17, Miami, New England is going to be going to Miami to end the season. They're going to be traveling. Th this one's a loss for me. Like I said, New England is uh, going halvesies with the Miami Dolphins like they do every single freaking year, guys. Every single year they do this. Um, and you have to understand is that the Patriots are going from playing in cold climates, practicing in the freezing cold, the snow, blizzards they played a cold game the week prior and then a week later they have to go to miami and play in like 80 to 90 degree weather the patriots never fare well against that um and like i said they always go have these so miami's gonna is gonna come out with this win so i believe that is five losses i have one uh two three four five so i think one so yeah ultimately I have the Patriots losing about five games. Let me see. I got so they're going to be twelve and five. So forgive me here too, guys. Like I'm, I'm still getting used to the whole extra game and and the new record. Like I could have popped this out and being like, oh, they're going to go this and this if it was like a regular record, um, but. Still, still have to get used to it. Still being a little thrown off by that extra game and, you know, the records being different. So I have New England going 12 and five. I don't think that's bad. I, I don't. I don't think that 12 and five is a bad record. I think it's much improved from the year prior. Some might say that that's too much. Some might say that that's not enough. <laughs> I've seen it go both ways. I think that this is a, a good way to start for a way too early record prediction. I think that the the teams that I have listed, again, if we look into it, them losing to the Bucks, them losing to um, Cleveland, them losing to the Bills, them losing to the Colts, and then them losing to the Dolphins. I think that's like not, not unrealistic at all. I think some teams to like potentially watch to for them that they could lose that I had them winning. We'll see about Tennessee. They they always play tough with the Patriots. Um, we'll always. I mean, we'll see Buffalo still. Like they still play hard. Can can they? You know, go up against the Patriots and and kill them. <laughs> and then my last one really would, uh, or not even my last one, but I guess I would say kind of like the Chargers and Dallas to to watch those two matchups. Also, I do still have the Patriots winning them right now, but you know, definitely watch them because maybe they could uh, go either way. 
the Patriots always kind of do have a situation every season where they uh, end up losing games where you're like, that's that shouldn't have happened. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I definitely just think the matchups that the Patriots have are just more favored. You know, people have to understand that last year, the Patriots won seven games with the NFL's it was either the hardest ranked or the second hardest ranked schedule in the entire NFL. And the Patriots have one of the easier schedules in the NFL this year also. Um, so you have to keep that in mind. They're going from like the hardest to uh, one of the easier schedules in the NFL. I think that will be significant for them. You have to understand too that much, much, much improved offense compared to the 2020 season via free agency, via the draft. They were able to bring back like all of their starters, and again, they were still able to win seven games despite all of that in 2020. A big part of that came down to scheming, coaching, Bill Belichick and the coaching staff. And they still, of course, obviously have that aspect too, but with a much, much, much upgraded team. And Cam Newton is going to have another year under his belt, an actual offseason, a preseason, mini camp, training camp, OTAs, all of this stuff to be able to work with these guys rather than him coming in late to the process, having a couple weeks of training camp and then, you know, being asked, hey, you know, you're, it, it's go time, do your thing. So I, I'm definitely more confident in this, uh, this season. And I don't think that this record is unrealistic, but I want to know your guys thoughts. Like always, let me know in the comment section below. Remember to give this video a big, big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for all of your new England Patriots news. Like always, I appreciate you guys for watching. I'll catch you in the next one and check out my Patreon. Of course, if you guys would like to get some more exclusive content on the new England Patriots, like always, I appreciate you guys though.